Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, questions about the longevity products or formulations or skin health or the true skin health products, please call 844-236-6010. That's our call-in number, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do. Try to call in early so we can squeeze in as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products, you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can check out my blog at pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right off the website, also brightsideben.com. And, of course, you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. 2470. And if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel, as well as well as our Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Balm, and Truth Serum. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Truth Skin Health products are all 100% active and functional ingredients. All You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com. Truth treatments.com okay so we are talking hormone health we started talking about the ketogenic diet and the ketogenic diet is a wonderful way to help build up your natural steroid hormones hormones coordinate everything in the body the body's made up of a trillion a hundred trillion little components called cells we talked about this a little bit yesterday a hundred trillion of these little components how big is a trillion Well, how big is 100 trillion? It would take you 32 million years to count all your cells one by one. That's how big 100 trillion is. Another way to think about 100 trillion is compare a grain of salt to all the water in 100 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And that's what a trillion, or that's what 100 trillion, that, that would represent the relationship between one and 100 trillion. We're talking small, folks, and we're talking a lot. And with these kinds of numbers, cells require some kind of way of coordinating everything. And the body coordinates all of these tiny little components into one whole via the activity of chemicals, i.e. hormones. Chemical signals that, for the most part, go through the blood and in some miraculous fashion contact all the various cells in the body and turn them on, basically, or turn them off or make something happen. We spent a lot of time talking about the steroid hormones. Those are one class of hormones. Those are the hormones that are involved with our ability to thrive and grow and repair and anti-age and fight diseases. The other hormones, the peptide hormones, those are more involved with the quick kinds of reactions, digestion and movement and, and brain chemistry. The steroid hormones are our long-term thrival hormones or survival hormones. The major steroid hormones that we've been talking about are the PPD hormones, which are converted into into really potent, potent hormones, particularly estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol, also another hormone called aldosterone. So you got your PPD hormones. Those are the ones that we really want to, that I'm really going to spend a lot of time talking about. Well, we'll spend time talking about the other hormones too. 
but the PPD hormones are converted into estrogen, testosterone, and aldosterone and cortisol. The PPD hormones are much more benign. They're safer. They're easier to use. They're over the counter. The other hormones, the other four hormones on the other end of the spectrum, those you need prescriptions for. Testosterone you need a prescription for. Estrogen you need a prescription for. Cortisol you need a prescription for. And uh, aldosterone, you don't re there's no real drugs for aldosterone. That's the blood pressure hormone. But in any case, those are the real potent ones. These four, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, or uh, estrogen, estrogen, testosterone, cortisol, and aldosterone. Those are your potent, potent steroid hormones. The PPDs, those are the ones we can get over the counter, and you can get a lot of benefits from these. The main control point for your steroid hormones is going to be food. And the, th and the thoughts we think. Food and the thoughts we think and the feelings we feel. Those are your major control points for hormones. And if you're thinking about hormone replacement therapy, you might want to think again. These days, there's a lot of folks, men and women, who are being medicalized with hormones on this, based on this dubious theory that if your body is not making enough of the hormones, then you just take them orally and you'll be fine. The problem with this kind of simple-minded thinking is it requires super high doses of pharmaceutical hormones, hundreds, thousands of times greater than the amount that's supposed to be in the blood. When you take hormones orally, or even when you use them transdermally in a skincare product, you're getting hundreds if not thousands of times the amount of hormones that your body really needs. That means the body's got to do all kinds of detoxification. It's got to burn through nutrients, precious nutrients. And remember, your the problems with aging may not be related to hormones. They may be related to nutritional deficiencies. Now you use hormone replacement therapy, and now you cause even more nutritional deficiencies, especially B vitamins, especially magnesium and zinc. And... On top of everything else, if you use artificial hormone replacement therapy, you're throwing off the balance of the various hormones. Eh, doctors will do things like triest or biest, where they give you two or different three estrogens. Triest is three and biest is two. Sometimes they'll throw in a little DHEA to balance things out. But that's not the way the body works. Hormones are constantly fluctuating. They're constantly changing based on what's happening in the environment. And when you insert this steady stream of these powerful chemicals from the outside in, it throws off the whole system and it jacks up the metabolism and the body chemistry. And if we're nutritionally deficient and now we jack up our body's chemistry or if we're toxic or if we're sick somehow or if our biochemistry is not firing on all cylinders, now we've compelled the body or forced the body to start revving up its systems. Not only did we not take care of the original problem, the nutritional deficiency or the toxicity, but because the stress of this excess hormones driving a nutritionally deficient or sick system, the stress can create more health challenges, including immune problems and autoimmune problems, even cancer. On top of everything else, we don't even really know what a good dose of hormone replacement therapy is. They'll, we get dosed when, when you go to the, the gynecologist or the chiropractor, whoever, the, the naturopath or whoever, the endocrinologist, whoever the doctor is who's dosing you, he doesn't know how much you need. They're going by blood levels or they're going by sometimes saliva levels or sometimes urine levels. Usually it's blood levels, but those are really meaningless because how much hormone in the blood doesn't tell you the, about the effect the hormone is having. If you've got a problem at the cell level, it doesn't matter how much hormone is in the blood. So you can't really dose these things uh, accurately. And this is, this is true with all hormone replacement therapy, but it's especially true with pharmaceutical hormones, Premarin, Senestin, Injuvia, Ogen, Estrace. Even natural hormones or so-called natural bioidentical hormones are problematic. And as we said so many times on this program, there's no such thing as bioidentical hormones. It's marketing. There's no such thing as natural hormone therapy or hor natural hormone replacement therapy. You can't do it. It's all just marketing. Hormone replacement, whether it's so-called natural or pharmaceutical, is tricky business. And this is why hormone replacement therapy can cause so many problems. And this is why the PPD hormones can be so important and so helpful. All right, I'll continue when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we do have lines open for you. We've got a full board open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. 
If you have questions about the longevity products or the Truth Skin Health products or formulations or you want to wean yourself off or help a loved one wean themselves off a prescription drug, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended on the program, or if you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee, you can start yourself a longevity business and make some money selling longevity products or just get your products at the wholesale price. Please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Okay, so PPD hormones, progesterone, pregnenolone, and DHEA. These are super helpful, super important. I love the fact that they're non-toxic. DHA got to be a little careful with, as we said. A DHEA is closer to estrogen and, and testosterone and cortisol and uh, aldosterone than, than the other hormones are. So it tends to be a little bit more potent. You got to be a little bit careful with DHEA. Pregnenolone, you can take 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams, 300 milligrams of it. Progesterone, you really don't have to dose yourself. You don't have to worry about how much you use because uh, this, the side effects of progesterone are a little bit a little bit of fatigue. That's about it. Do you want to be a little bit careful with progesterone? But DHEA, that's a tricky one. DHEA, you want to stick to around 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams, somewhere in there. I know you can buy 50 milligram capsules. I think that's a little bit too much. You're not going to really hurt yourself. You may cause, you may break out. Your skin may be oily. Uh, you may lose some hair if you're a guy, or you may get some body hair if you're a girl. There's actually a form of DHEA that minimizes some of these uh, side effects. We'll talk about that form, 7-keto DHEA, here in the next day or two. In any case, DHEA is just stupendously, stupendously important stuff. It's a major anti-stress hormone. It's like pregnenolone in this way, and also uh, like vitamin E, by the way. Vitamin E, pregnenolone, DHEA, these all work as anti-cortisol substances. They help stabilize the effects of excess cortisol, excess stress hormone. You've got excess cortisol if you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease. You probably have a cortisol issue uh, if you are dealing with... Uh, if you're dealing with some kind of sleep problem, insomnia, or if you get up in the middle of the night and you can't fall asleep, if you have anxiety issues, you're probably dealing with a cortisol issue. Sometimes cortisol depletion can occur if you're burning through cortisol at a rapid rate. All of this is to say that DHEA can help you with your cortisol. It can help protect against something called adrenal fatigue, which I know you guys have heard of. We've talked about that a lot. Adrenal fatigue, you can tell you have adrenal fatigue issues if you're gaining weight and unexplained. Uh, if, you, if you've lost weight and then all of a sudden you stop losing weight, chances are pretty good you got an adrenal problem. If you feel dizzy when you stand up, that's a sign of an adrenal problem. If you crave salt, if you can't fall asleep even though you're tired, if you wake up tired, all of these are indicators that you may be dealing with AF, adrenal fatigue, and you would be in good company. We don't really know how many people have AF or adrenal fatigue because the, the symptoms are so subtle, but it could be in the millions. Dr. Kerry Saucer has a book called Exhausted and Drained. It's not just in your brain, all about adrenal fatigue. Estimates are that millions, according to Dr. Saucer anyway, millions of Americans are suffering with adrenal fatigue issues. The adrenal glands are two little tiny pieces of tissue. They sit on top of the kidneys. They are a major player in blood pressure. That's really, I, well, I don't want to say that's their main role, but that's one of their main roles is to help the body control blood pressure. Your, your major blood pressure control systems are your adrenal glands and your kidneys. That's really where blood pressure is controlled, at the adrenal gland level and at the kidney level. Especially the, well, both the kidney level and the adrenal gland level. I, I think the adrenal glands... I like focusing on the adrenal glands because it's easier. It's easier to work with your adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are constantly monitoring oxygen. That's one of their main roles is to monitor blood oxygen and carbon dioxide. When, when uh, oxygen levels drop, when carbon dioxide goes up, the adrenal glands will change how pressure is shunted through the blood. And this is why deep breathing is the absolute best, easiest, gentlest, most effective way to lower your blood pressure. More oxygenation in the blood signals the adrenal glands to relax the pressure. When there's no oxygen or less oxygen in the blood, when, uh, when, when blood oxygen levels drop, the, hormones will, the adrenal gland will kind of read the blood and it will secrete something called aldosterone. Aldosterone is a mineral hormone, and the way the body one of the main ways the body controls the pressure is by by shunting minerals in and out of the blood. When minerals go into the blood, they pull water in the blood, and that increases the pressure. 
Aldosterone is a salt retaining hormone. It keeps minerals in the body. It's called, they call it a mineral corticoid. That's the technical name for it. It's a mineral hormone. When you have excesses of aldosterone, you'll end up with high blood pressure. When you have deficiencies in aldosterone, you can end up with low blood pressure. Deficiencies in aldosterone will occur when your pressure is high for a long period of time or when you're under stress for a long period of time. And this is where the desire to eat salt comes from. Your aldosterone depletion will signal salt cravings. This is why salt can be so important. Salt is so important. Celtic sea salt and water. So aldosterone is just, it's one of those, one of those uh, poorly understood or under-recognized hormones. Adrenaline get, and cortisol get all the press when it comes to the adrenal hormones. When it comes to stress hormones, you think about cortisol mostly and adrenaline. But aldosterone might be even more important when it comes to a stress hormone because of its ability to control minerals in the blood and because of its ability to, to control blood pressure. The adrenal glands sense low oxygen, aldosterone gets secreted, pulls electrolytes into the blood, that attracts water, increases the blood volume, and that increases the pressure. More electrolytes in the blood means more fluid in the blood, and that means more pressure. And it's this salt pulling effect and the increase in fluidization that gives aldosterone its benefits, or, or it's how aldosterone works. This is particularly important when it comes to sodium. When aldosterone secretions are normal, sodium levels will also be normal, but when we're under stress and the hormone aldosterone goes up, sodium will go up in the blood, and your doctor will tell you to go on a low-sodium diet. Stupidity. The problem isn't the uh, sodium. The problem is the stress and the subsequent secretion of hormones, aldosterone. It's not the sodium, and to restrict sodium, it just restricts you of an essential element. Just more doctor stupidity. This is why you don't want to go to a doctor if you're sick. You want to go to a biochemist who understands how chemistry works. So, and, and now it's even in the lay press how sodium, uh, restricting sodium or low salt diet is not a good idea. The problem isn't the sodium. The problem is the stress and the hormones and the aldosterone. As your stress hormones, as the aldosterone levels uh, eventually, as they stay higher, eventually they're gonna, you're going to run out of aldosterone. And then you've got another problem. Then you have a, pro a problem with uh, a reduced blood volume and reduced sodium. This is where the salt cravings come from. In any case, the key to the whole thing is to re relax the body. Deep breathe, muscle relaxation, hot water. All of these tell the adrenal glands to stand down. Hypertension is a stress issue. 80 million plus Americans are dealing with hypertension issues and they're doing a low salt diet or, or in order to correct it or they're doing a beta blocker in order to correct it, a drug that poisons your heart or a calcium channel blocker that poisons your heart or a diuretic that forces fluid out of your blood. These are all the stupid, stupid, stupid ways the medical model deals with what is nothing more than a generic example of the stress response, hypertension, aldosterone. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, please head over to truthtreatments.com. And if you want to buy any of the longevity products or join the Brightside Ben team, head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866 735 2470. 866 735 2470. That's the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. Okay, let's see here from. Uh, the University Medical College in Krakow, Poland, this is published by the World Health Organization, blood pressure may soar if you live near an airport. How do you like that? Living near an airport isn't just hard on your hearing, it may also be hard on your heart, according to new research. I remember when I was a kid, my family moved to, uh, to New York City, right near Kennedy Airport, and planes used to take off every half hour, every 20 minutes, every 15 minutes, we'd hear planes. And it drives you crazy. Eventually, you tune the stuff out. I remember in school, they would the teacher would just stop talking for a couple seconds, and then to the plane, till the plane to, uh, flew by. And this would happen during the day, ten or fifteen times during the day. It just makes you go crazy. 
after a while, and I could see why blood pressure would soar if you live near an airport, because blood pressure is part of the stress response. If you got high blood pressure, you don't have a beta blocker issue. You don't need to poison your heart. The number one reason why people have high blood pressure is because of the manifestation of a stress response, and that stress response can be related to food, it can be related to sugar, and it often is related to sugar, and it could be related to psychological stress as well as deficiencies in oxygen, uh, oxygen and oxygen in the blood, which is why deep breathing is so helpful, relaxation techniques are so helpful, reducing your sugar is so helpful, using sugar metabolizing nutrients like magnesium and chromium and niacin are all very, very helpful for folks dealing with high blood pressure. Nobody, nobody, nobody should have hypertension, and you don't need a doctor or a drug. From uh, the uh, FACEB journal, exercise may have therapeutic potential for muscle repair in older populations. How do you like that? From FACEB, F, I think you say it FACEB, uh, this is June 17th, 2016. Hit the gym when you get older. You may think that you're too weak to get a workout, but you're not. Even if you're very, very frail, you can get a workout with just lifting a, a one pound dumbbell. The speed of muscle repair slows as we get older, but we can reverse that process, i.e. we can anti-age by getting in the gym, by doing resistance training, by walking briskly, by walking up the stairs, by parking the car far away from the supermarket and walking across the parking lot, and then walking back across the parking lot with your bags. There's all these kinds of ways that we can stimulate our system to improve how well we age. And this, by the way, is true about the brain, too. When you're at the supermarket and you get your bulk almonds or your bulk produce, whatever it is, memorize the number. Don't write the number down. Memorize it. If somebody gives you a phone number, memorize the phone number. If you're reading a book and you have a bookmark in the, and you're going to put a bookmark in the book, memorize the page. Memorizing is a great way to stimulate the brain, improving memory. Speaking of Alzheimer's disease from the University of Adelaide, Alzheimer's genetics points to new research direction. You don't need to worry about genetics. If you have Alzheimer's disease, you have amyloidosis of the brain. Amyloidosis is a, a classic way the body breaks down, fibers. This is one of the major ways the body breaks down is the secretion of fibers. Doctors will say, amyloid plaques, you have amyloid, or tau protein. They, they love talking this way. Tau protein, amyloid plaques in the brain. Well, guess what? Amyloid plaques are just fibrosis, just the secretion of fibers, which is just a classic way the body breaks down. It just happens to be happening in the brain. That's all Alzheimer's disease is. It's arthritis of the brain. Neuron death may be caused by overactive immune system. This one is from uh, University of Montreal. Neuron death, nerve cells, death, may be caused by an overactive immune system, opening a new path of discovery in Parkinson's disease. New path of discovery? We've been saying this for decades. If you got Parkinson's disease, your body is, is inflamed. Inflammation is the immune system. Your brain is inflamed. Inflammation is the immune system. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Bell's palsy, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's an inflammatory condition leading to and caused by Breakdown in cells due to nutritional deficiencies, starvation, and suffocation. Period. End of story. There is no doctor in that equation. Get on a nutritional supplement program featuring the B vitamins for the brain as well as omega fatty acids for the brain as well as coconut oil for the brain. Make sure you're practicing your deep breathing techniques and slow down or ideally eliminate the entrance of toxins, including sugar, through the digestive tract. Guaranteed 100%, no matter what you're dealing with, you are going to feel better. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Chris in Maine, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, buddy? Hey, Ben, all right, I want to talk about Lyme disease. Okay, what do you want to talk about? All right. All right, so I'm skeptical of it, but my girlfriend definitely got bit by a tick that had the bacteria Borrelia. Did she get a rash? Yeah, she got the rash. She got the uh, traditional like bullseye rash. Okay. Now, we got a really, and she she got some of the symptoms. I know Lyme disease is a broad spectrum of symptoms. After well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. There's the there's the acute Lyme's disease, which is when you get bit by the tick and you get the rash and your body reacts. And then there's somehow this idea of chronic Lyme disease, which I'm not buying into. That's the problem yeah. here. 
You know what I'm saying? People will blame yeah. their crappy lifestyle and how they feel, and they'll blame it on the tick rather than their lifestyle. You follow what I'm saying? So yeah, here's exactly. What... And I heard, yeah, Go I was ahead. just going to say, I heard, I heard Dr. Joe Walla talk about that, too. He was saying people like gluten intolerance and other like things. All of that. Like, exactly. Like, yeah. No, I get that. But um, so here's so the deal, though. Has, here's the yeah. here's the deal, Chris. It doesn't matter what yeah. we call it. We want to get your girlfriend to feel better. You follow me? Right. This is the goal. You can call it Lyme's disease. You can call it autoimmune disease. You can call it uh, MTHFR deficiency. It doesn't really matter. You can call it cancer. Well, our job, as uh, my job as a healthcare professional, your job as a, as a good boyfriend, our job for our loved ones and for ourselves is to help us feel better. You see the distinction, Chris? Does that make sense? It, oh, no, we, absolutely. Adam. Right? We want to just feel better. And how do you feel better? Forget the diagnosis. The diagnosis is a way of getting you medicalized. It's a way of getting you programmed into the computer so the insurance company will pay for this and pay for that and decide what your rates are going to be. It's just statistics and disempowerment, and it's ways of, of having some kind of centralized control over our lives, in this case, medicalized control over our lives. To feel better, you don't need a doctor, and you don't need a diagnosis, number one. You work on the digestive system. And why, number one? Because if the digestive system breaks down, not only will you not be absorbing your nutrients, which will lead to this vicious downward spiral of disease, but you'll also have toxicity getting into the blood. So for it, it, I'm not saying to work on the digestive system because I'm some kind of eating freak. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just saying if you're sick, this is the core. This is where it all happens or where it all begins. So you work on the gut. How? Well, you know, I don't. I hate saying it over and over again because I feel like I'm boring you guys. But, but it's easy. You do an eliminate. You do a food diary. You do an elimination diet. You do the probiotics and fermented food. You eat less food. You drink water with your meals. You use apple cider vinegar. Hang on, Chris. We got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. Okay. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben talking to Chris in Maine. Let's get Chris back up here. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Ben. All right. Hey. So, yeah. Hey. So let me. Just, just to, oh, okay. Go ahead. No, do you want to yeah, say something? Finish, yeah, yeah. I just want to finish up the key points with it quickly. Um, so we take the Beyond Tangy. We do EFAs, we do vitamin C. We take B vitamins. We take apple cider vinegar. We do just about everything. I've been listening to your show for like two years, so we're okay. really on point with our health. Sick. Well, don't uh, say that, Chris. Listen, Chris, I'm not telling you. I, 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 you can't say that, and I'm not. I'm not attacking you. The reason you can't yeah. say that is because your your girlfriend's sick. If you take that approach, and I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about your girlfriend. Okay. If you take right. that approach, then you're like, what do I do? If you take the approach, well, here, where am I missing? What am I not doing? Then you have some places yeah. to work. It's not a matter of you being a bad person and, and me attacking you. It's a question of where can I work? Where, where do I have a place where I can kind of fine-tune the program? And that's why it doesn't matter what you're taking. It matters what you're not doing. Or it doesn't matter what you're not doing. It matters what you're doing, vice versa. Either way, it, it's, you know what I'm saying? You've got to find a place to work. Either find a place you can add or find a place you can subtract. So the digestive system is always the first culprit. Does she have any, and you don't need to answer me, and these are what you need to ask yourself yeah. or ask her. Does she have any digestive issues? Are they associated with foods? The only way to know that is by doing an elimination diet, as I was saying before the break, where you'd write down everything you eat and then see how you feel, and then supporting digestive health with probiotics and fermented foods and fiber and uh, all the different ways we talk about. Secondly, the blood sugar thing. Hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, is like a, the same sign as chronic Lyme's disease. If you go through a checklist of hypoglycemia symptoms, it's the same thing. You follow me? There's only yeah. a, a certain pool of symptoms that the body can draw from. You get tired or you're not healing or your, your uh, uh, bones are weaker, your muscles are weaker, you're, f fati you're uh, uh, confused, you have mental health issues, you can't sleep at night. There's a certain amount of symptoms that the body has. And there, it's a general pool, and it's related to all of these basic things that we talk about in the program. If you think it's a tick, then there's nothing you could do. You follow me? It doesn't matter if it's a tick or not. Say it is a tick. You still have to do these things. So working on the blood sugar, using all your blood sugar metabolizing nutrients, and don't forget about relaxing the body. 
The body heals when it relaxes. When you have a chronic condition that's not healing, almost by definition, your body is not in a relaxation parasympathetic mode, which is why you got to relax the body. Oxygenation, uh, carbon dioxide also it's, is important too, making sure you're breathing out slowly so the carbon dioxide levels stay kind of stay high a little bit longer. You always want to breathe out slowly and you always want to breathe rhythmically. It's the rhythm that activates, in addition to the, the oxygen, it's the rhythm that activates the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, okay. if you want a couple yeah. extra things that I would do, if, I, if you might want to consider, is intravenous nutrition, intravenous vitamin C, especially. Vitamin C is so powerfully cleansing for the body. Maybe okay. even intravenous glutathione, detoxification strategies using bentonite clay, perhaps, and zeolite, and one of my all-time favorite detox the supplements N-acetylcysteine or NAC, and then you probably want some ultimate selenium along with that if you're not already doing it, and also the Fucoid Z, which can help support immunity too. Okay, my man, okay. Does that, is yeah, that helpful? No, okay, yeah, we're deal. just trying to avoid antibiotics. So. I, you know what? What's an antibiotic can do? Let me just say this, and I'll let you go here, okay? If you ever, if a doctor ever puts you on a long-term antibiotic for something as, as, as dubious as chronic Lyme's disease, you know, I don't want to do. I don't want to get all hyperbolic here and say somebody ought to go to jail. But it's a pretty lousy way to treat a patient to put them on a chronic, uh, an antibiotic long term for a so-called chronic uh, degenerative breakdown disease like Lyme's, like supposed yeah. Lyme's disease. Okay, I got to motivate. Thanks for your call. I hope, I hope I helped you, Chris. Okay, let's go to Leroy in Atlanta. I think I talked to Leroy yesterday. Did we talk to Leroy yesterday? Leroy. Yeah. Hey, Leroy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's up, my man? How can we help? All right. So I have a cavity and the keys some background on me. I also have a mitral valve prolapse. Okay. So whenever I go to the dentist, I have to take a box of fillers an hour before I go. Okay. Well, doing some research on how to get rid of this cavity naturally, I heard on Joyce's show, The Power Hour, a yeah. caller call in and say he used bone broth. Yep. I was going to tell you calcium. I was going to tell you calcium. Mitral valve prolapse, uh, heart problems, and cavities are indicative of an issue with calcium, although it could be a lot of other things. But bone broth is a great source of building substances. It's got calcium in there. I, I, that's a great strategy, bone broth. Absolutely. 100%. Is that okay, what you're... Two other, two other things I researched. Comfrey root, C-O-M-R-F-R. I remember you talking about that yesterday. I like comfrey. I use I use some extracts of comfrey, something called allantoin in my skincare formulations, and I do like comfrey, and it is healing, but that's not the real problem. So I, I'm not a, you know, I don't, I don't do the herbal medicine thing because I like the nutritional aspect so much more. You know, you don't have a comfrey deficiency. You know what I mean? Okay. You, you may have a calcium deficiency or a protein deficiency. You know, comfrey is a medicine... I'm working with nutrition here. Not that there's not a times when you need medicine, and I've done herbal medicine, and I've tinctured my own herbs, and I had an herbal pharmacy, and I, and I have great respect for herbs, but I like focusing on the nutritional side a little bit more than the herbal side. What was the last one you were going to ask, Leroy? Organic eggshells. Okay, it's, that's uh, clever. Cracked crack eggshells, yeah. and uh, boil it for five minutes, the yeah. eggshell, and then pound it up and you, that's drink. awesome. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Same idea as bone broth. Organic eggshell is very similar to bone broth in that way. They, bo they both have lots of minerals and proteins and polysaccharides and building substances. Yes, indeed. Eggshell. And you can use it on your skin, too, by the way, the eggshell. If you pound it out and you, uh, and you boil it down real good, you, you can, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff you can do with eggshells. Good source of silica. Um, yes. the last thing. Yeah? Just the last thing. So since I had a mitral prolapse, I was thinking I should take yellow root in lieu of being able to take a uh, antibiotic every day. You're talking about when the cavity starts to heal, won't it break off and go into my bloodstream? Uh, yeah, you're going to get bacteria in the blood. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. So should I yeah. Take that's a sign. That's a that's a that is a problem. That yellow root, you know. Uh, if that's not it's not that's not going to do too much if you want to do a real good powerful antibiotic that's not an antibiotic um, you can use a vitamin C and also zinc just for the immune system but vitamin C is like a natural antibiotic it amps up the immune system so the immune system can do its own work yellow root or golden seal as it's called you know it's got some benefits as a medicine but it's not it's not really that potent it's not potent enough like an, it's not as potent as an antibiotic certainly I would be using vitamin C and then vitamin C also is important for building tissue 
you know, the calcium is important. All the stuff in the bone broth is important, uh, absolutely, in the eggshells. But there's not a lot of vitamin C there, and you need vitamin C to turn the whole thing on. Yes, those polysaccharides and those proteins are important, but without vitamin C, you can't make connective tissue. So I'd be using high doses of vitamin C in addition to everything else. Sounds like you're on top of things, though, Leroy. Thank- How much is vitamin C? Uh, a couple thousand milligrams a day. I would do it in divided doses. The one knock on vitamin C is if you uh, if you take too much all at once, you get bloated or you can get some diarrhea or feel kind of crampy. It's a little bit uncomfortable. So you want to kind of see where you're at, see see how much you can handle. Start off with half a gram, work yourself up into a gram, then two grams. Put it in water, drink it down. Vitamin C is just incredible stuff. Absolutely. I, I hate isolating one particular nutrient, but if I was going to isolate one nutrient, it would be vitamin C. Vitamin C is made, as we've said so many times, made by most animals, just human beings and uh, certain species of gorilla, I think, and also guinea pigs have lost the ability, and the fruit bat have lost the ability to make vitamin C. When uh, The only animals that don't get Ebola virus, that don't get the infection from Ebola virus, are the fruit bats, the certain species of guinea pig, apes, and human beings. And uh, some people, including myself, believe that vitamin C has a major role to play in protection from Ebola virus and a lot of other things as well. Does that help you, Leroy? Anything else you want to add? Oh, yeah, definitely. I look forward to giving you an update and showing my dentist that no, you can't have my I appreciate that, Leroy. Have a beautiful day in Atlanta, Georgia, and thank you so much for your call. All right, so that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thank you for listening. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. If you want to check out our Longevity products, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And, of course, if you want to check out our True Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% gel made with 25% vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrance, no silicon, no oil, no wax, no filler, no nothing that your skin doesn't want or doesn't need. You can head over to truthtreatments.com. We also have a blog up at truthtreatments.com. And I also have a blog at my, on my Facebook page, uh, The Truth with Ben. And uh, don't, try to face, try, don't try to friend me on my personal page. If, uh, if you're going to send me a friend request, go to The Truth with Ben. We also blog regularly on uh, The Truth with Ben and truthtreatments.com. And, of course, you can purchase skin health products, Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Retinol 5% Gel at truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. We'll continue talking about steroid hormones tomorrow as we continue our discussion on the ketogenic diet on The Bright Side. Have yourselves a beautiful, spectacular, awesome, wonderful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.